So this video is a continuation from the previous video. Okay, so shapes make forms. Shapes are the two-dimensional, right? So the, the shape of this round object is a circle. The form of this round object is a sphere. And you see the differences. This one is, it's laying flat, so it only has y and x dimensions, coordinates. And But this one is on a 3D. It's got y dimension, x dimension, and z dimension. Same thing, square is a cube or a pyramid, right? If you just pinch, you take those four corners and pinch them together, you get the pyramid. Um, triangle can become a cone. Actually, cylinder should be up here with circle. Anyway, um, so shapes are two-dimensional, forms are three-dimensional. And just like shapes, forms can be geometric or organic. Um, they can be digital or physical. They can be measured by height, width, and depth. And then uh, a form can be created by combining shapes. And that is called Boolean geometry. Um, we, we see that when we start working in computer programs, software programs, and start working with 3D shapes. Um, you, you will use, uh, it's based on Charles Boole. He was uh, uh, the person who founded or dis or interpreted um, three-dimensional, the combining of three-dimensional shapes, which is union, intersection, subtraction, main ones. So you could, for instance, take that sphere and that cube and overlap them and then tell it to join them. You could tell it to subtract the sphere from the cube, or you could tell it to erase everything where they don't overlap. And those remaining forms create a brand new form all of their own. And those become the, while they're still man-made, those become a little bit more organic. Um, but generally when we talk about organic, we're talking about things like trees and leaves and plants. Um, and depending on how we use them, they can be uh, very ornate or they can be very basic. So in digital design, just think of the form as the object you're designing for. And that, that will help you start to understand. And so what I tell people is when you start looking at something that's very complex and you want to draw it or create it, break it down into its most basic forms. It makes it easier and less overwhelming. It's the, where, the place to start. Very interesting. Uh, oh, I just noticed the tail has been either broken off or is, wasn't painted. His tail's like that too. Anyway, so interesting, right? This is an organic. Um, and these, this is interesting, right? So you start to look at these shapes and how they are kind of like Legos and forms. Legos are, I'm going to use Legos because I'm guessing most of you all have used or played with Legos, own Legos. Um, I, I did um, as a child. I saved up my allowance for months until I could afford this Lego kit and it was $11. And every time my mother took us to the store, I would go in and I would visit it. <laughs> It was this kit on the top shelf. I can still see it. I don't know how old I was. I was probably, I don't know, nine or 10. And I would go and I would visit it. And it was $11. And back then, $11 might have as well have been a, a million dollars. It was so much money. Because, you know, I mean, if I got 50 cents for allowance, you know how long that took, 22 weeks to save up for that. That's a long time. And so... Um, I finally got my $11 because I got some birthday money and I went and I bought that Lego kit and it was one of my favorite things to play with. And so here, these shapes are made out of clay and they're used kind of in the same way to create different little Zen arrangements. And that's, that's really clever. Oh, here we go. Talking about Legos. So the form of this building started with rectangles. You based on whoops. It's amazing how you cannot see typos until you struck 
something's not right. S T R U C T R. Sure. There we go. Oh, too many R's. There we go. Um, you don't see your own typos until you either post something on social media and then the world can see your typos um, or until you walk away and come back. And this is an excellent lesson in doing that. When you're, when you're working on something and you finish, take a break long enough for your brain to start to forget the details and then review it. And then you'll catch your typos or your mistakes, just like I'm doing now. So back to this. Um, so they started with, there were on the, the site plan that they were working with, there were um, some axes on the site and they used that to start to, here's the main axis on the site. And they use this with the rectangles, the forms, and then they began to break them up based on different information that they had that we don't know until they got these buildings. And, you know, you, the whole idea of form follows function, which you're going to hear me talk about that um, a, quite a bit. Um, is shown here and it starts with the basic forms and when we talked about the boolean geometry right so we have the this one axis this way this other axis this way and you see how they be we cut through and start to cut all right so that would be a subtraction of form and some changing of the roofs because looks like you know obviously you can't flat roofs aren't truly flat they have to have uh, they have to be able to drain so they're sloped and so they sloped that for drainage and then they worked on it a little bit more through other things points connected and then they you know began and they added more and there you go and then end result and so just sort of the process of how these forms um, came to be I love this all these different forms. I mean, look at those. Those are beautiful. You know, so we've been so far, we're talking about circles, squares, cylinders. These forms are more where, you know, architectural design tends to look to go. Um, and it's beautiful. And you can use these as inspiration. Hint, hint. <laughs> and so if you look at the building on the right, and that's an that's the building it's built i look so it's the models and the modeling materials and lighting has got, have gotten so good because i teach uh 3d animation uh program as well i use 3d studio max and the the rendering package now for that program is so amazing you can't differentiate between a model and a photo anymore um and so here is a, a building that is, let's see, pays tribute to DNA. Um, the most important source code of modern biopharmacal industry through the curving, curve modeling spiral in irregular forms. And so they use, they use the form, they used, so this, they, this was their client and they used what the client did to symbolically create a form based on what they do and i'm going to tell you the happiest way that one of the happiest things you can do or one of the ha one of the what best things you can do to make your clients happy is to tell them how their design represents them in abstraction and that's what they did this is just an abstraction we've talked about abstraction this is an abstraction of dna to create the form for the building Um, okay, so texture is the, is, well, it's the way a surface feels or the way it's perceived to feel. If you look like, for instance, if you look at that, that painting, you can touch it, right? He used layers of oil paint to give both figurative, literal and figurative texture to his work. That you can touch, but the other stuff on the page is flat. And it looks like if you touched it, you could feel a very fuzzy sweater but you would just feel paper and looks like charcoal. It has a power to attract or detract a viewer's eyes. You could pull people in or you could push them away. And we can apply texture to lines, shapes, forms, and other elements. And 
in order to achieve dimensional appearance to a composition, either intentional, physically, or literally, or figuratively. And so, you know, as we talked about, there are two types. Tactile, where you touch it and you feel it, and visual, where it looks like it, you could feel it. Um, so tree bark, literal tree bark, would be tactile. A photo of tree bark, which is on the right, would be very smooth, but your brain having touched a tree would know that it, you could feel it, so that becomes visual. Okay. I got more on this one than normal, I think. Um, and then, so we often um, work with texture in, in architecture. And here's an example of uh, she was doing, or he was doing, the person who created this, Liz Steele. She, I assume she, was doing um, a sketch, a rendering. And she created these uh, material panels to show textures. And so, of course, buildings can have both visual and tact tactile textures. The visual textures are in the shapes and the forms, while the tactile textures are in the materials that comprise them, such as brick, wood, fabric. And we can, we can, we can simulate these textures in renderings of models and elevations that we present to clients during the design phase because I'm going to tell you most of your clients are not going to be where you are on the visualization scale. They're not all, but most people don't score as high on the visual scale that you did as you do. Um, and so we have to take what's in our head and replicate it as a drawing to show them. And we have to be able to emulate texture so they can see what we're talking about. In fact, here's a, an example of what I'm talking about in terms of photos, right? So here's potential brick textures that we could pick out. So as designers, when we're, we're thinking about, well, what materials are we going to use? We, we get little swatches that we can look at and we have to make decisions from that. And it's, it's tough to do that because you see all these choices like, well, which, which is the right one? <laughs> and of course you'll know based on certain things like the style, what is the style? What is your, what are your client's preferences? Um, and then from there we pick and here you can see the final built uh, product of the brick in this space. Okay, I'm going to stop here and I'll see you in the next video.